As I'm walking back from the creek, I'm stoked. I got a bundle of fish. I'm ready to cook these up. There's no smoke. As I get closer to the shelter, it looks like it's torn up. Oh, man. It's... The Pacific Northwest has claimed over 2,000 ships in the past two centuries, earning these waters the nickname Graveyard of the Pacific. This is a very wild place, very brutal coastline, and a very thick forest. In the Pacific Northwest is the place where Mother Nature stirs up her emotions. Might be one stew pot you don't want to get into. There's not a whole lot of nothing left of that boat. This boat has wrecked right on the shoreline. The problem is, right now, the tides are coming up. Hey, Matt, I got a vest. Our plan right now is to get off of this coastline. Oh, no. In many survival situations, the coast is the ideal place to seek rescue. But along the rocky shore of the Pacific Northwest, with the tide rising, Matt and Joe have an immediate need to find higher ground where they can safely shelter for the night. This is looking a little bit more inviting. Hmm, looks like we're above the tide line. It's about as good as it gets, huh? Let me just throw up a down and dirty shelter for us. Just make it comfortable for the night. Well, if you got that covered, I'm going to go back down the shoreline. I saw some mussels down there. That sounds good. Done deal. Right now, the only heat that Matt and I have are the BTUs that our bodies are producing. So what I'm going to do is use physics in our favor. I'm going to make a very small shelter. These vests are actually made in layers. So I'm going to lay those down first as a base, and then just grab a bunch of these ferns, lay them down, and call it a date. <laughs> I can barely hey, see you in there. So what do you got in the bag? I got a, just a few mussels for us. Should crack them open? Yeah, let's do it. Whenever I see people eating raw oysters and mussels, I always scratch my head. It's like eating a slimy, salty snot. How could that possibly taste good? It just tastes like crap. What do you think, Matt? First thing in the morning, just head back down to the coast and try to keep working our way around. Yeah. Try to find a, a slot out of here. We finally made it to the top of this thing, and in front of us, we have this beautiful forest. That's a great change of pace for Matt and I. We haven't found fresh water yet today, but in the distance, I hear what sounds like water gurgling or thumping. All right, here's the creek, Matt. Well, that's a good sign. Yeah. That means we have fresh water and a potential food source. Dude, look at that. Ah. I look off to my left, and I see what looks like a trap. The first thing that should be going through your mind when you see a trap is, where is the person that just said it? This area definitely looks a little disturbed. Yep. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt some. Matter of fact, what is that right there? Cigarette butts. Oh, that is gold out in this environment. It looks like there's just a few matches in there, slightly damp. It's hard to say if they're going to work or not. We need to figure out what we're going to do, Matt. I think the best course of action right now is just go ahead and make the shelter, hunker down, be warm, be comfortable tonight, so we can wait for the trapper to come back. Matt likes to camp. He likes to stay out in nature like this. This is what he does. With that said, if you're going to work on the shelter, why don't I work on trying to get a fire going? Yeah, let me go look for poles. So. Considering the conditions we're in right now, it's cold, rainy, wet environment. It would be ideal for us to get a shelter built where we contain both us and a fire at the same time. That means if it starts to rain again, we're going to be protected along with our fire. This forest here is really ideal because we have everything you need, really, to build a, a long-term shelter. All right, ah, nice one. We'll see if I can get something going with this. This shelter is not something I would have built. Matt wanted to build it. Good on him. Joe sets off on his own in search of the trapper that left the trap and some litter in the area. 
He hopes to pick up a trail and follow it back to civilization. All right, look at this right here. Without a doubt, that was man-made. Pretty fresh. There's no doubt the guy stepped right here, pushed this dead log out of the way. There's another piece of ground spore right here, and that's very obvious. Here's your toe dig right here. You got some tread. I've been tracking this individual for quite a ways, and the more I'm following this person's tracks, the closer I'm getting to the coastline, and that's not where I want to be going. Chivalva. While Joe pursues his target, Matt works to improve their comfort in the cold and damp climate. It's a ship horn. This is definitely not an elk bugling. I hear a foghorn, and I'm hightailing it out to the rim to see the ship. I grab the red blanket, because at least I'll have something to wave out in the wind. Hello? That was close. There's definitely something out there. Hearing that foghorn out in the distance is a great indicator that boats are passing by here, so we have to get up some type of signal for a boat to see it. This red flag's the largest I've got, and I'm basically going to angle the two yellow flags out to the sides, so when the wind picks up, it's going to be a big visual. Hopefully out on this open point, a ship or something will be able to see it and blow their foghorn like I heard earlier. I've got the flags in place, and they're moving, they're sizable, and they're bright. If anything's going to catch somebody's eye, this will do it. This spot will actually be ideal, because I've got a nice open bank here. What I can do is funnel this fish upstream and place the trap right over there. Now all I have to do is create a funnel in the creek using some of these rocks. And I'm going to go down as far downstream as I can, and I'm going to spook all the fish upstream through this rifle. Once I put the net in place, they're going to want to come back to their, their holes they're familiar with. The thing with fish is that they already naturally face upstream, so it's usually easier to scare a fish upstream. So I'm basically going along. I'm just beating on the water, and I'm moving around as much as I can to drive them upward. That's great. There's about a half a dozen fish that swam up from down there. So they're up here. I'm going to go ahead and set the trap, and then they're going to want to come down through it. But at first, I got to warm up my feet, because I'm a wimp. I'd like to say that moving quickly is the most efficient way to move the fish forward, but the truth is my feet are really cold right now. I did see some greens not too far back there. Perfect. Why don't I go see if I can grab some of them? I like that. I'm hungry. Yeah. OK. I'm seeing some movement in the net. I think I got one. Actually, there's a couple in there. You'll see they're tangled up right there in the bottom of the net. We got four little fish in here. It's not much. They're borderline minnows, but it's going to be some protein for us, a little extra calories. Best part, this beats raw mussels. As I'm walking back from the creek, I'm stoked. I got a bundle of fish. I'm ready to cook these up. There's no smoke. As I get closer to the shelter, it looks like it's torn up. Oh, man. It's... It's like this log fell down inside the shelter. And it's like the rain came through and took out the fire. What happened? Looks like a dead piece of this tree came right through the front of the shelter here. Exposed the fire to the rain. That's not what I wanted to hear. This fire is completely out. You cannot lose that psychological edge. You're in a fight for your life. We've got one match left. If it don't light, uh, we've got problems. All right, here we go, Matt. How you doing in there, buddy? Good, man. Okay. That's what I'm looking for right there. Nice one. All right. This is awesome. I was really looking forward to cooking and smoking that fish. Yeah. Maybe some stew tonight, too. Well, I've got some greens out there, man. Ah, oh, sweet. Yep. Mm. I'm liking that, Matt. 
Good stuff, huh? Beautiful. How's that uh, stew looking over there, Matt? I'm seeing it steaming. I think it's just about ready. Try some soup. Ooh. That's got a great flavor, Matt. Oh, yeah. Definitely sleep like a baby tonight, man.